Hey folks, welcome back to the old Jarhead. I wanted to talk today about some things to consider if you want to try to hack a proprietary extension battery or external battery cable for your power station so that you can hook up a second battery and not their proprietary battery to your unit. And there are some things that I think you need to consider when you're doing it. Some things I'll tell you about my experience with the Opus Mega One and definitely some things that you need to really do right, I think. So the first thing is, is if you're going to hack the cable like I did so that you can plug in some other manufacturer's battery, the voltage needs to be the same. So one of the things you need to know is the voltage of your power station. So you want to have that power station charged up to 100% and you want to check the voltage and you can check the voltage at the external port because they give you those extra battery ports. You just flip the cover off of it, stick your multimeter on there and find out which is the negative and positive side and what the voltage reading is there. Your external battery, which should also be at 100%, should be within about half a volt of that power station battery that you're gonna hook up to. Now that half a volt is something that I was told by a battery manufacturer when paralleling batteries. I guess the theory is as long as they're within one half of a volt, then the BMSs can equalize between the two batteries and away you go. So that's number one. Number two, check the cable before you cut it. Make sure that when your unit's on, you're getting voltage at the end of the cable. Once you cut the end off, which of course you wanna do when it's disconnected, I recommend that you check your polarity, which side is negative, which is positive, on that cable before you hook it up to the battery. You wanna make sure that you get your polarity correct. Positive to positive, negative to negative. I know that's really basic, simple stuff, but I do think it's something you need to pay attention to. Your battery should be off. If it does not have an off switch, which most of the big 48 volt batteries I've seen do, but if it does not have one, I recommend putting one in line like I've used on a number of my videos. I'll drop a link down below for you. I recommend putting that in between so that you can have that battery completely powered off and disconnected from the unit. Now, once you've connected them together and they're both off, you turn the battery on. This is what I did. Then turn the power station on. The power station should see that voltage, though I don't think those BMSs are that smart. I don't know. But at that point, you should have no smoke coming out of your power station. And hopefully we don't let any smoke out, so cross your fingers. I'm gonna plug this in. One of the mistakes I see that people could make is they could have the power station turned on already and then they plug it in. The problem with that is it's already trying to draw power off of that battery. And I don't think that's a good practice. I think you need to have both off, turn the battery on, or at least connect the battery, then turn the power station on. At that point, it should automatically start drawing from that battery. And that's what I saw. I saw just a quick burp of some wattage coming off of the big battery going to the Opus Mega One, and then it settled right down. So that tells me that it recognized that there was a battery there, they were parallel, and all was right in the world. Once you've done that, you should be able to draw off of both the battery and the power station and your external battery at the same time, and they should discharge at the same rate. However, there is something that I saw that I think is important to pay attention to. Now, what I saw was I saw that the Opus actually drew faster under some extra testing where I was running it for much longer than I was able to do when I made that first video. And I noticed that the Opus battery did drop faster than the golf cart battery. All right, my first observation is we're still at 81%, but I'm not seeing any draw off of the lead time. I would expect that if they were gonna balance, you'd see some kind of a draw. And I believe there's only one reason for that, and that's cabling. In the case of the Opus Mega, I need to test with both of their external battery cables hooked up to my external battery to see if that helps. But here's the problem, and this happens in all systems when you try to parallel and or put batteries in series and then draw off of all those batteries. In fact, when I first built my power at my cabin, I made the mistake of thinking that where I was hooked up to my bus bar was perfectly fine. But the problem was is that I had one string of batteries closer to the draw, the, the, the wires hooked up to my inverter, 
than another. And it absolutely would draw off that closer battery faster than the furthest away. And that's just the nature of the beast. It's path of least resistance, I think. I'm not an electrical engineer, but I've been told by electrical engineers that the problem is, is that the distance from the batteries to whatever is drawing off of them needs to be identical or as close as possible as you can get. So I actually rebuilt my system so that where my inverter landed on my bus bars is exactly where the batteries connected as well. So that no string of batteries was further away than the other. Now, what does that have to do with the Opus Mega One and what I saw there? Well, the cabling in that power station is actually really close to that battery. And then you use their external jumper cable that you've now hacked up so that you can hook up to your battery and it's a foot and a half long or so. So now you've got a longer run to that second battery than the inverter has to the onboard battery. So it does seem that it will draw off the onboard battery faster than it will the external. That's important to know because I added 5,120 watt hours to a unit that had 1,024 the 1024 did draw down about five or six percent more over a fairly extended period of time. Now, I didn't drain them completely down, but it was clear to me that the Opus would actually drain down faster than the external battery would. Which makes me think, I wonder if I'd have plugged in the external battery to the solar input port, if that might have balanced things out a little bit. I don't know. I also noticed that while the Opus charged up faster, got to 100%, it did that a little bit faster than my external battery, but it continued to charge that external battery until it got up to 100%. So maybe it's not that big of an issue, but it is something to pay attention to. So to recap, make sure both units are off, turn the battery on first, then the power station. Make sure that you've got your polarity correct. And if you're using the Opus, which has four wires, two positive, two negative, that are parallel to their internal battery, it might be worth using both positives and both negatives on the external battery to give you a little less resistance. They're about eight gauge wires and maybe having two hooked up to that battery might be better than just one pair. Something to consider. I haven't tested it yet, but it's something I've been thinking about. It's kind of like just running bigger speaker wire so your speakers get that power a little bit quicker and have less voltage drop, etc., etc. Something to consider. In any case, folks, I hope that helps somebody out. Have fun playing with these power stations. I do. Meanwhile, I'm going to drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate you being here. The old jar hit out.